Hey everybody, I'm back and still meal, still meal prepping. I took a little break, visited with my father-in-law while he came for a visit and the boys are off and running. So I'm here with the dogs and I'm just gonna continue meal prepping and doing what I do playing in the kitchen. And right now I'm gonna do something I've always wanted to try. I've not done it. I've seen the recipes and heard you can do it. And I'm gonna make, pressure cooker multi-grain bread yeah so this is going to be an experience it's the first time for me so you guys are going to be first timers right along with me um it's looks relatively easy and you know me i love bread a little too much and i haven't made my sourdough in a while so this is going to be something new and it's fun and want to try it so we're going to use the ceramic bowl and rack for the multi cooker and this is the same one that you got if you have the quick cooker it's the same rack all of the accessories are exactly the same even the inner pot is the same so if you've got one of the older um, quick cookers and you manage to get your hands on an updated multi cooker with those additional features then you can use all of those accessories right with your multi cooker. So I'm gonna, I've already got it sprayed with just a little bit of oil because I don't want my dough to stick in that ceramic pot. Um, I've already got some of my ingredients in and this recipe is really cool because it gives you the instructions to do it with a regular mixer. And then over here in the bottom, it's got Cook's Tip. This is you can make this with the deluxe stand mixer for a more hands-off experience. Bonus! Anytime I can get something to do what I need it to do and I don't have to stand over it and scrape down and do all that good stuff, that's the coolest thing to me because I have other things that I want to do in life versus stand here. Don't you hate that? Having to stand over the stove and stir or stand over, you know, sit there with the hand mixer, you know, and have to do all that mess. The stand mixer does it for you. And with the presets, it makes it even easier. You don't have to sit there and change the speed or, you know, it's just light years better than your normal hand mixer. So um, the recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of old fashioned oats. Now I'm gonna make this exactly like it is the first time out. And then the next time I make it, I'm going to add some different grains in here too, just to make it a little bit different. So a package of dry yeast. If you don't have a package, package yeast, you have bulk, it's two and a quarter teaspoons. Really simple. Two and a quarter teaspoons is equal to one packet or one sachet of dry yeast. Three and a half cups of bread flour. This is a small loaf because you can see it's going to fit here in this ceramic pan. And we're gonna use this pan to bake it in as well in the multi cooker. One and a quarter cups of warm water, one quarter cup of butter softened. I am using regular butter because I am out of plant-based butter, so shame on me. That just doesn't normally happen in this household. And a quarter cup of honey plus two tablespoons divided. So we have our quarter cup of honey ready to go in. Now, to do this in the stand mixer, literally you dump everything in. I started following the directions before I see the little note on the, the cook's tip. So um, I've got two cups of my flour, I've got my oats, I've got my yeast and my salt already in there. So we're gonna add the third cup of flour. Okay, I need to get my flour out and get my half cup. And silly me. Shout out to my Tupperware lady, Yvonne Silver. Woohoo! She's my gal. Make sure I have all my Tupperware. All right, so I need a half cup measuring cup. I said, y'all, this is real. I screw up in the kitchen just like everybody else does. You know, I am not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so there's our three and a half cups of flour. All right. We're gonna to toss in our butter. It's already softened. I've already cut it to um, one quarter cup measure. I have my one and a quarter cups warm water. Now your water, you want that to be between 120 and 130. You don't wanna to get too hot because you don't wanna kill your yeast, but your yeast is 
buried in with everything else if you put ingredients in an order. So it's not gonna be super hot by the time you get to your yeast. Okay, and then I'm gonna add my quarter cup of honey. There we go. There we go. Now, the other two teaspoons of honey will go, or two tablespoons, I'm sorry, will go to um, finishing off your loaf. All right, so now literally all we do is we're gonna release, I'm gonna try to get this over here where you guys can see it. Listen, I got tomato bales of soup going in the, in the deluxe cooking blender. I've got veggie broth going on the stove. This kitchen is hopping this morning. All right, so we're gonna pull back here on this lever. I don't know if you can see that right there. We're gonna pull up on that. Lower our kneading. I have a kneading uh, dough hook on there. I'm gonna put my shield on just in case because you guys know KitchenAid starts out a little slow and then ramps right back up and it can throw stuff everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this to knead. All right, let me get these out of the way so you can see. Okay, you have several different settings. You've got custom, whip, cream, mix, beat, and knead. And when you do the custom setting, you can choose the speed and the time. So you have the duration, how long you want it to mix, how long you want it to knead, what have you. But we're gonna go ahead and put this on the preset, which is knead. So I'm gonna turn the dial down to knead. And then we're gonna press it one time. And we're gonna change the time, because the preset is for eight minutes. The instructions say for six minutes. So we're going to go turn down to six minutes. All right, there we go. And we're gonna push the dial one more time. And it's gonna start. And it's gonna start slow. It starts on speed one. And it's going to slowly increase to where it needs to be. As it mixes everything together, it's an orbital, uh, spit it out, orbital planetary motor. So it's turning at a different rate than it's going. The hook is actually turning at a different rate as it's going around the bowl. So it's going to get all those bits mixed in. If you're doing this with a regular stand mixer, you can use the dough hook if you have it, or it says beat. Um, so you can use a regular mixer. Um, obviously, some of the hand mixers do have dough hooks, um, but with heavy duty enough to handle this kind of dough, um, but you can do it by hand as well. See, we're, we're already a minute in, and it almost has all the flour incorporated. Yeah, that's cool. And no poof of flour anywhere. Awesome sauce, right? I like that. I really like it. This thing is so sleek. And I've decided, keep an eye on my page, because I've decided, I've given all my electrics names. Oh, there we go, we're ramping up another speed. So we're up to two. And it's picking up all the dough around the bowl. So it's, it's gonna ball up around the hook and it's gonna continue to knead. So this is great for, if you don't have a stand mix and you've been wanting one, now is the time because right now this is only available to host and you can get it for 60% off. That's a huge, huge, huge discount. Comes with the beater, the scraping beater, the dough hook, and a whip. It does not come with the shield. The shield is separate, so if you can get the shield, go with it as well. Uh, most people are finding they really don't need it. It's great to pour things in when you have to add things in, um, but it doesn't start out really fast. It doesn't throw flour or powdered sugar. Uh, I've used it to make royal icing and I've had, the first time I did it, I think I did the settings wrong and it didn't work very well. So I did it again. I'm like, by golly, I'm going to do it the college try. And sure enough, it did fine. So um, this may become my royal icing mixer. So my KitchenAid, I have a big KitchenAid, so it's, my cookie dough that I use for my sugar cookies is it's a large quantity dough, so I'll stick with that one for that, and maybe just use this one for royal icing and other things. So like this, we're already down to three minutes, and it's a nice ball of dough. I'm really thinking I'm gonna like this bread. So um, I may have to make another batch. <laughs> 
because I'm thinking adding in things like spelt flour, uh, maybe a little bit of um, toasted chia seeds or some millet. I can toast and you know grind up a little bit of millet. You can do sunflower seeds, toasted sunflower seeds, unsalted um, pepitas. Those would be great sprinkled on top before you bake. So chop them up a little bit with the food chopper and um, brush it with your honey and sprinkle your seeds on top and bake it off in the multi-cooker. I think it's going to be the gorgeous loaf. I really do. Oh man, this is awesome. Two minutes left to go. Um, one of the things that I love about this machine is because it does come with that cooking guide just like all of our electrics do. And it explains everything. It will take you right through the use and care. Um, we also do have the attachment port on the front. I'll show you that when we stop. So if you can see that there will be attachments coming. Um, they are not available yet. Um, so as soon as Camper Chef has them ready, they'll let us know and we'll let you know for sure. This is a nice, a nice Go. This really is. And this thing, being able to proof in the multi cooker. Yeah, we're gonna put it on the yogurt setting, and we're gonna proof our dough right in the multi cooker, and then we'll take it out, punch it down, re-oil our pan, our ceramic pan, and then we're gonna put it right back in there to bake. Easy, easy. You don't have to heat up the kitchen oven. Um, you can actually use this also, this um, ceramic pan. You can use that in the air fryer as well. So it is safe to use for the air, in the air fryer. This we got 49 seconds left and that is it. I can't wait. Mm, who doesn't love fresh bread? Red baking. I mean, oh my gosh. And that's one thing that um, if you're trying to sell your house, Bake cookies, a pie, or a loaf of bread right before the realtor comes to show the house. Sells your house every time. My mom used to be a real estate agent, so again. 14 seconds left, and it's going to cut off. We're already up. Um, yeah. So it didn't have to go very far, only the second speed. This has, I think, like eight or nine speeds. It's like, it will, it'll crank out. Look at that. And it beeps to tell you it's done. So I'm going to take my shield off, set it aside. I'm going to go ahead and press that lever again right here on the back. And I'm going to lift it up. And it's locked in place. So it's not going to fall back down into the bowl um, and damage anything. And the bowl works just like the head tilt kitchen aids. Um, I have a bowl lift with the professional model bowl lift, uh, but this works like the other kitchen aids. It, you slide the bowl around. Let me take my beater, my uh, dough hook out of here. And you just, I think I've got it stuck in here. I'm sorry. Maybe I have it stuck in too far. Oh, wow. There we go. Don't know my own strength when I put it in there, apparently. So, and there's our dough right there. Look at that. You can see the oats. So I'm just going to take this out, and I'm just going to kind of shape it into a boule. What's called a boule, B-O-U-L-E. So we're going to shape it into a round. Okay, just, and this is a kind of a, a little rustic. Oh, this looks so good, you guys. All right. So first, before I put it in here, and then put it in the multi-cooker. I'm gonna put it top down, just to pick up some of that oil, and then I'm gonna flip it over, okay? There we go. All right, so let's get our mixer out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down. I'm gonna turn it off, and it does have an ON OFF switch. I know our air fryer does not. Um, and that's one of the things that people have been asking for is to make sure our electrics have an on and off switch. We always called it O-N-O-F-F. 
It's a navy thing. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna turn on our multi cooker. Okay, and we're gonna put this over on the yogurt setting. All the way down here, second, next to the last. And let's see. Do, 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 do. For 30 minutes on medium. All right, so I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna lower this with using the handles. I'm gonna lower it right down into the pot. You don't have to add anything, no water, anything like that. It's gonna sit right there. And we're going to press once. It's already preset to medium. So press one time, and then we're gonna change the time. It is set for one hour. We've now changed it to 30 minutes, and we're gonna press it one more time. Temperature stays at medium, press, medium, and press and hold, and it starts. So it's preheating, and once it is up to temperature, it's gonna stay there for 30 minutes. So this is gonna cut your rise time in half easily. So um, instead of preheating the oven or trying to find a warm place where you can let it rise out of drafts, we keep our house fairly cool. So this is a go gonna be a good go-to for me. Um, I don't like to keep the house too warm. And sometimes for bread or growing my sourdough starter, it's just not warm enough. So this will be a great option when I wanna make a quick loaf of bread I can do this, mix it up in the in the deluxe stand mixer, and then pop it right in here to let it proof. So, 30 minutes from now, approximately, well, about maybe 35 minutes by the time it gets to the preheat, gets through with preheating. Um, 35 minutes, we'll come back, we'll take it out, punch it down, reshape it, and pop it in to bake. All right, I'll see you guys later.